Hi, this is Nikki Woods, and today for Author Chat, we are talking to Naya Brown Matthews, who is an author and motivational speaker, also a North Carolina native who wrote The Boss in You to empower and educate women and young girls, especially blacks, on how to overcome their life obstacles, personal setbacks, and various challenges which they encounter in order to become successful in not only their careers, uh, but also their relationships and their personal lives. Anaya is a successful businesswoman and is also a highly sought-after uh, speaker who speaks specifically on overcoming cancer, being the mother of a teen daughter who has been bullied because of her medical condition of dwarfing. She's also married to retired NFL wide receiver Super Bowl champion Eric Matthews uh, and is a proud alum, we have to get this in, of East Carolina University where she earned a bachelor's in business. She and her husband are very active uh, giving back to the Atlanta community and has hosted a huge breast cancer fundraiser event for the last few years to celebrate being cancer free. Uh, Well, first of all, congratulations on that, Naya, uh, and welcome uh, to Author Chat. How are you? All is well. How are you? All is well on my end as well. So t- talk to me a little bit about, because you, you cover quite a bit, not only in, in what you do and who you are, but also in the book. So so walk me through um, some of the reasons or a few of the reasons why you decided to, to write this book. The reason why I wrote it, I guess I just wanted to, I just wanted to bring light um, over the, I see a lot of negative exposure of images of women um, celebrating and promoting uh, negative reality TV, social media, um, all, and it's all over the place. And I just wanted to help bring focus and celebrate educated, talented, and classy women and let them know that you are celebrated just because, you know, you're you're beautiful, you're smart. And I know that may not seem like it's popular nowadays, but... That is really what's important, and um, I just wanted to inspire them to let them know that, you know, it's a balance, and you don't have to compromise your dignity just to fit in these days. And how um, how how big of, I guess, a motivating factor was uh, your daughter um, and the fact that she has been bullied um, in the past? Uh, how big of a factor was that for you in writing a book that celebrates women and, and who they are? I saw my daughter always coming home, you know, I guess not looking like everybody else, you know, the in crowd. And I guess, you know, she said, Mom, you know, I want to be, I want people to know who I am without looking at my exterior because, again, she does have pituitary dwarfism. And so I said, you know what, it starts at home, clearly. And I just wanted to empower her and give her a piece of, of 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 encouraging words daily and just letting her know that in spite of you know God made you just the way you are but you don't have to try to fit in you you're born to stand out and and that's exactly what I I feed to her daily and also I think it's interesting I have two boys um and the youngest one has you know dealt with being bullied but I also have a niece um that I think had some challenges with that as well and I think it's interesting that you know, we, in the best of circumstances, I think it's hard for especially African American women um, to become the boss <laughs> and to be a boss. Um, but when you have to deal with with something that may look different to others, how difficult do you think it is for for us to succeed then? Well, I think that again, it's something. I, it's a technique I call tunnel vision, and that's keeping your eye on the prize. I mean, in spite of what's going on via television, via, you know, at school, via workplace, when you develop tunnel vision and and realize what your goal is and what your purpose is, then I think you have a you have a better chance at grabbing what it is that you're at, you're sought after. And I think that, you know, sometimes we get distracted a lot of times based on, you know, trying to fit in this box. And um, I just think it's important that we learn how to circle that and reel it in and, and start to just clearly focus on the prize, and that's you and your self-worth and your and your mission. And what about for you personally, having overcome cancer twice? How, how difficult was it for you, being a wife and a mother and a businesswoman, um, to push through and to continue to not just survive but to um, thrive under the circumstances? 
I didn't want having cancer to become a death sentence to me. You know, I wanted to show women who suffered from cancer or any life-altering disease and circumstances that they can have, you know, they don't let that steal their joy and their zest for life. You know, and I chose to live. And, I, you know, that organization I have, Two Fabulous for Cancer, it was just created just for that because there is life after cancer. And, you know, it does not, again, have to be a death sentence. So that's exactly why I have the drive. And so, and so, what are some of the the things that you did, I guess, in that time to continue to motivate yourself? Because I mean, I know people who have had to deal with um, much less, and I'm not trying to trivialize it, but um, you know, things that that may not be considered as a death sentence, but have to push through difficulties and challenges, and even some health um, issues. What did you do to keep yourself motivated? Um, and how did you take care of yourself, you know, as, as African-American women? I mean, I think a lot of times, you know, we always put the needs of others first, especially our family and our husbands and, you know, children and, and you know, that sort of thing. So how did you take care of yourself and how did you continue to, to stay motivated? Well, you know, that old saying, if you look good, you feel good. I <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I often found myself when I was going to Emory for treatment, you know, when I in that waiting room, I saw, you know, people that didn't look like me, you know, they weren't, I was 26 when I was first diagnosed. Um, and then again, it came back, I was 37. But I just realized that I would walk into that cancer treatment center with my hair laid, my face beat, my 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 heels on, because I just I decided I made a decision that I was not gonna look how I felt because people tend to treat you if you look sickly, they want you know they do a pity party and that's not what I wanted. I continued to work. I can you know I had treatments. I came into the office. I ran my household. And there were days, mind you, of course, you know, you're going to have, you're going to feel, you know, not so good. But I just was determined that if I looked good, I felt good. And I was just too fabulous for cancer anyway. So, and that's what really helped me. It really did. I hope you have a t-shirt with that somewhere. I sure do, honey. Okay, I- good. I <laughs> sure because that, that is, that's good stuff. And you know what? And I've heard other people say it. And my mom always said it, you know, also, I mean, it's like when you feel bad, you need to look better. Because you don't want people to judge you on your your circumstances, so I um I really appreciate you saying that. Absolutely. What do you What do you want women and and young ladies ultimately to walk away with after they read this book? I want women to embrace the idea that you know supporting one another is is not outdated. You still can have that sisterhood factor. I believe collectively we can make a dynamic impact in this world, um, encouraging each other, inspiring each other to pursue, you know, our ambitions. And I, I just I'd like the Lean In movement. I'm a huge believer that, you know, we we have the power. I mean, let's just get it clear. We have the power. We have we can multitask. We can do it all. But I think collectively we can make a greater impact and just change the world that way. And um, I want them to take this book and use it as a manual to find that boss in them to take it, you know, to take it to the next level, and that's exactly what I want to happen. I'm talking to Naya Brown Matthews, who is the author of The Boss in You. Um, I know one thing that you are adamant about, not only in your your recovery um, and overcoming of cancer, but also as it relates to your business success, and that is your faith in God. What role has that played for you, and why do you not, you know, shy away um, from mentioning, talking about, attributing um, all that you are now today to your faith in God? I believe that, you know, I was born, I have two sisters, and my family, they taught us the foundation, and that was God. He is the foundation of everything. Um, And they used to always remind us that if you put everything in the correct order, i.e., you know, your faith, your what you believe in, you put the work in and you pray. God will help you sustain whatever, whether it's your career, whether it's your personal, whether your love, whatever, that if you have the foundation in the right order, that, you know, that could take you to the highest places because, you know, God has the ability to hold us and sustain us in the midst of every situation. And um, that's what I, that's what I, that's the reason why. I incorporate talking about my faith in God. Tell me a little bit about your husband and the role that he, that he's played in in all of this. It's amazing, you know, when you're going through when you're going through treatment. 
um, you know, you would look for your husband to be the strength. But he said that I, I strengthened him because he saw that, you know, I never gave up. And as an athlete, you know, they have to be, you know, the straight, he was a, line, he was a um, wide receiver. So it was all the pressure was on him to make sure that, um, you know, that he take, he does the, you know, the, um, what do you want to call it? He, he wins the game. So in my, in I, my aspect of it, he said he leaned clearly on me because – he saw the strength to 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 say that you know what, in spite of it all, she she can she can hold it down. So it was just easy for him to just come in as more or less like my my faith partner, my prayer partner. Because other other than that, I had it, I had it, I had everything else going. I was just that strong of a person. Well, that is awesome. The book is uh, The Boss in You, and it is available everywhere. But you can also connect with Naya uh, on her website, which is NayaBrownMatthews.com. She's also on Instagram and Twitter uh, at Naya Brown Matthews and Naya B. Matthews, respectively. Naya, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Nick. I appreciate you so much. No, I appreciate you and continue to empower and, and inspire and encourage us all to uh, to do better. I, I definitely appreciate you.